What's up team? Welcome back to All The Work, my restoration slash awesomeification of my 1988 Ski Supreme, Joe the Dad. At this point, I'm three weeks away from the water. I always knew that after I finished painting, things were gonna start moving fast with this boat, and boy did it. I am Joe, a stay-at-home dad without a lot of budget and not a lot of time, making a boat happen. In this week's video, I install the flooring. Now, I just finished painting everything, and it really took me a long time to figure out what my next step was going to be after painting. Ron Tanis goes right to the carpeting once he's done with his painting, so I figure whatever Ron Tanis does, that's what I should do. And even though I had a lot of apprehension, I knew it was the right call. Why did I have a lot of apprehension? Because once I started putting the flooring in, that meant I was moving forward and building the thing up and would no longer have the opportunity to go back through and fix little things or change little things. And that was kind of a scary proposition for me. But I knew it was the right thing to do, so it was time to start flooring. What is the flooring in this thing? I bought the cheap C-Deck foam that you can get off of Amazon. I got the gray stuff with the blue stripes down the middle for the sides, and then the diamond pattern stuff for the center panels. I watch a lot of videos where people take this cheap foam and simply razor knife out the shapes and stick it in. I didn't want it to look that cheap. I wanted to router and bevel on my edges so it looked like the professional sea deck stuff that you see on real boats or more expensive boats. So back in the spring, I took the time to make these templates out of plywood for all the different panels and different sections on the boat. Here's one of the templates. You can see I've made it out of quarter inch plywood. When I bought this, this plywood was 50 bucks a sheet. I couldn't believe it. I needed two sheets, blew me away. Who cares, it's just money. This is the router bit I decided to go with. It has the smallest bevel. This guy just rides along and gives me a rounded edge of my foam. Here are some clean shots of my beveled edges. Comes around, you see one of the corners. Comes in. I think it came out fantastic. Turned out that just the simplest one, the littlest angle, turns out to be the best. I staple the corners of the foam down to the template. I tried to avoid stapling into the foam itself. However, this was the best method to hold the foam to the template for the routering. I need to do a lot of guess and check work of where to set the depth of my router bit to get the proper shape and look of the foam. I put two by four spacers up under it so that when I was routering, the bit wouldn't be touching the ground. When I was routering, I always needed to go over it twice. The first routering run, would be just to get the cut done and then I would go back and do a second routering run and it would just clean up the foam a little bit more, make it a cleaner, precise line. The hardest part of this was actually finding the center of the diamonds on the, the sheet of foam itself. I marked out my center line clearly on here, find my diamonds, get it lined up. It came out dynamite. Unfortunately, my GoPro cut out as I was routering the second panel. Here I am after bedtime making one little touch-up router run before moving on to the two large floor panels. At this point, I am pushing super hard in this project. I have my eye on the finish line. It's three weeks away from the water, but my goal is to have it on the water in two weeks. These big floor templates are all eight feet long. They have all the contours where they go up into the gunnel. It's a big job and it was a challenge to do. However, after a lot of guess and check work with the stapling and everything, I got it down, a lot of routering, and again, they came out fantastic. up at 12.30 in the morning still working on these panels. Once I was done with the two big floor templates, I still had a little bit of juice in me, so I tackled pulling the decals off of the nose, the old New Hampshire decals. A sticky job, just something that had to be done. It doesn't take a lot of setup, doesn't take a lot of cleanup afterwards, just something that had to be done. It worked maybe better than I even thought it was gonna work. Couldn't have been happier with it. The next day, I had a little touch-up work to do on the front panel. 
there are two screws holding the shower controls up under this panel. I wanted to make holes where those screws are so that I could repair or modify that in the future. Here I am prepping the panel to actually lay down my first piece of foam. There's a lot of videos online that show you how to do this really well. I don't have a link to the best one on here. I found the best way to do this was to lay the foam down after I clean the surface and the back of the foam, tape off half of the foam up here, roll this half back, scar this with a razor knife so that the backing was cut all the way through, fold this up here, fold that down there so when it laid back down there's a little bit of a bumper that will allow you to pick it back up. This half taped, this half up, cut, fold, fold, start pulling this way, peeling the backing as you go this way. I have a little roller tool that I picked up, it's for carpeting, rolling it, trying to work from the middle out so I get good clean adhesion, no air bubbles, it goes down flat, it goes down smooth, it came out fantastic again, I love it. Once I had stuck the foam to this center panel, I was able to take the center access port and just put it straight in and drill all the holes in and have that hold the foam down in the middle. I spent a ton of time trying to add paint around that hole. Turns out to be a waste of time. The foam covers it all up. The first sheet of foam was stuck down to the first panel. I couldn't be happier. After getting the first section of foam stuck down to the panel, I took on the rear panel. You have a good look at the diamond pattern here and the technique I used to get the foam rolled out. After completing the rear panel, I move on to each side panel. Again, it is very important that I clean the panel itself before I lay it down on top of the floor so that no dust from the panel moves onto the floor. At this point, I am just laying the panels in and I will accomplish actually sticking them down tonight after the kids go to bed. After getting both floor panels laid into the boat, our buddy Ash and Bryce's little buddy Reed come over to check out our progress. After bed, I got to work on sticking down the floor panels, and it was up to 2 a.m. again. Sticking the large panels down to the floor, I followed the same procedure. I cleaned the floor and the back of the panel itself, taped off the front end, peeled back the back, then rolled the front out. They are quite a bit bigger, so I had to take my time a little bit more, but actually they went in super easy. Anyone can install foam, super simple. I did have some gaps at the rear of the boat, where the rear seat goes, where my eight foot sheet of foam didn't quite make it all the way to the rear, so I cut out these little squares that go in the back so that when the seat's not in, it's continuous seat deck all the way to the rear. I didn't router these, because you're really never gonna see them. I just wanted the seat to sit flat, really. Here I am away from the camera, cutting out the panels that will go under the driver's seat. I 
did not have enough of the gray and blue foam to do the panel that goes up under the driver's seat. So I made the call to switch to the C-Deck that I have from that other kit. There was a little panel next to the driver's seat foam that I had to make the decision, do I stick with the gray and blue there or match the driver's side foam and I decided to go with the driver's side, the C deck foam, the green stuff. It looks fantastic. I'm psyched. This is what it looks like up under the driver's seat. You see, I went with the actual true C deck here, different color. And then this panel right here is the same color as the driver's seat. It flows fairly nicely. You don't see a giant change from there to there. And my goodness, this boat is dirty. The next day, I was extremely tired. All I had energy to do was to bring Bryce out to the boat, show him that the floor was in the boat. Hey, look, Bryce, I'm looking. Mm -hmm. It does. Thanks, buddy. He told me I did a good job. That felt great. And then I took on just installing the bezel kit for the steering wheel. Somehow I put it on wrong. This bezel kit still boggles my mind of which direction it goes, what's up, what's down, where's in, where's out, and I do screw it up and it's gonna cost me a lot of time later. It was something I could do that didn't require a lot of prep work or cleanup work and I could do it with Bryce out there. It really was only about 25 minutes worth of work because I was so exhausted after the two big nights in a row. Day 120, I'm back out in the boat. I'm getting plastic down on top of the foam so that it stays clean and doesn't get dinged up through the rest of the process. This is my first attempt at realigning the engine. If you remember way back when, I had some guys at a garage align my engine over the winter. They bungled it, super annoying, and so I am now attempting to align it myself. It won't budge. Now I bang on it, I use a pry bar, I push on it, it won't move. So I just keep hitting the joints with penetrating lube and save it for later. It's a weekend, kids are awake, I can bang around the garage and make some noise, no big deal. Ron Tannis has a great engine alignment video shown here. After the kids get to bed, I get to work on mounting the dash panel, the custom made vinyl panel that I made for the dash, and then realize that I shouldn't be doing that, that I should be really carpeting the nose of the boat and carpeting the gunnel, at least the passenger side gunnel of the boat. Kind of like the foam, I was nervous to do it, wasn't sure what step to go, but I needed to get the carpet up in the nose. I had never really carpeted anything before. I had a big bucket of carpet goop. I have the little trowel thingy and I just had to go for it. It took me a while to get the shape of the carpet cut out for the nose, a lot of cramped space up under there, but eventually I get it, I get it set up right. I moved the camera into the wrong spot for this shot, I'm sorry, but I'm up there under the nose, I pull back the front of the carpet halfway, get my goop up under there, lay it over that, get it stuck down, then pull out the carpet from the rear up, get my goop under there, roll it back, I leave the tabs of the carpet going up to the edges, and then I move on to the gunnel. Doing the gunnel was extremely hard. I did lay on my side, get in there, kind of work my way through, get the goop up under. I had pre-cut all this carpet out in the driveway days ago, and then I had done more cutting that you can't really see in this video where I notch around where my LED lights are up under there. Those cuts work great and after I get all my goop laid in, I just move my carpet up under, stick it there. I did get a little bit of the carpet goop on some of the LED light connectors. That was a time for panic. Run inside, got some soapy water, clean that up, try my best to clean out so I make sure I'm going to have connections when I do stick those things together. And again, I'm up at 1 a.m. finishing up the project. The next morning, I woke up early, came down, used my little carpet roller to roll out the nose of the carpet, 
and the gun on the carpet. And after that roll, somehow it just smooths out and it came out fantastic. It's smooth, it's firm, it's in there. It looks great. Couldn't be happier. All right, the nose is carpeted. I did not install the carpet in the driver's side of the boat because I still need to make the mounts for the water ski. All right. Carpeted, not carpeted. You can see the difference between a gunnel without carpet and a gunnel with carpet. That carpet just looks great. So that's it for this week's video. Uh, next week, look forward to getting the swim deck mounted on this thing. That was a huge project that came out really good too. There's definitely points in this project that I'm more proud of than others. And this templating and the sea deck is one of the pieces that I am the most proud of. I executed it, it came out great, it worked as good, maybe better than I thought it was gonna work. It was fast, it was efficient, and it was smooth and clean. Thanks for watching Joe the Dad. Like, subscribe, please comment, tell me what you think. Joe the Dad! See you next week. And if you're interested in a four-year-old and a two-year-old shredding on scooters, check out some of my other videos.